when you have free reign of what to do with your time, but that time is limited, how do you spend it? So this was a show I'd never heard of. Um, it was brought up because my my boyfriend saw his uh, his housemates watch it, and he caught uh, actually one of the one of the more um, slightly atypical episodes. So he wasn't sure what it was, but we we sat down and watched most of it together. I finished it out, uh, on my own, and it's really fascinating. Carol and the End of the World. So this is an animated um, miniseries. It's contained. There's not going to be any second season um, for fairly obvious reasons uh, that came out on Netflix towards the tail end of that of last year, like December 23rd, which for my purposes, uh, slight spoiler for a video some months down the line, I am going to consider this eligible for my best stuff of 2024 list because this came out so late 2023 for all intents and purposes. It might as well have been 2024. But it is animated. It is 10 episodes. And it's fascinating in the most low-key, unobtrusive way possible. And that is is so perfect for what it's doing. There's a lot of things about this that are that's going to sound like, wait, how can that work? Or how can that be a good thing? And it's difficult to explain how this makes it work, but it does. At least it does for me. So the premise is pretty much what it sounds like. We kind of pick up, not really in media's res, but like there is uh, a celestial body, it's called Kepler 9C or something like that, that is on a collision course with Earth. It's in the sky, you look up and you can see it, and it's just slowly on its way to collide with Earth, and it's going to be the end of the world. Now, at the time that this picks up, people, we don't know how long they've known this, but they've known it, and they know how long they have left. And there are some things unspoken, and there's some things uh, very clearly illustrated so, like, for instance, uh, there seems to be an awful lot of empty buildings, not a lot of traffic. As time goes on, you may find yourself realizing, okay, a lot of people decided to leave on their own terms. Let's go with that. But for those who didn't, the majority at this point, however long ago this was discovered, Enough time has passed that the majority of people still around, the, the point that they are at in the, um, the grieving process is acceptance. People seem to have accepted, this is a thing that's happened, this is how much time we have left. And as you might expect, with people still sticking around, most of them like want to make the best of their time. Lots of people are taking whirlwind trips around the world. It's kind of a recurrent gag that like fireworks are just going off randomly because people just setting off fireworks. Why the heck not? And like you'll you'll just you'll get a long shot, the camera will pull back and you'll just see people jumping out of planes and skydiving. Like it's explicit. They are skydiving, you know, pulling the parachutes and whatnot. Because people are just doing that all the time. Because they're just trying to get the most out of the remaining days that they have. But then there's people like the main character, Carol. And Carol doesn't get fulfillment out of stuff like that. She doesn't even get fulfillment from the idea of doing stuff like that. Like, she doesn't want to not be here. But what she finds comforting is, like, she's, she's, a, very, she's a very introverted person. She's a very socially awkward person. I don't want to necessarily say neurally divergent coded, although probably a little bit, but like she, what she would like to do is just keep living a more or less normal life. Except you kind of can't because everyone around you is all going, woo, YOLO, effectively. And what does somebody like that do in a situation like this? Well, she finds a floor in an office building where people are just working. 
coming in nine to five, five days a week in the accounting department of an otherwise empty building, just coming in and working. What this show is, is a celebration of routine, of normality. This, all right, here's the single most pretentious thing I may have ever said in my life. Um, if you've ever seen the movie My Dinner with Andre, Wallace Shawn's character would have loved this show. <laughs> If you understood what I meant by that, you'll probably get what I'm getting at. For those of you who didn't, this is difficult to explain. But this is a, and like other characters get focused as we go along, but this is a show about people who would never be the main character in anything else. And the thing is, you could use that as a descriptor for some other things, but usually, usually when you use a descriptor like that, you're talking about non typical protagonist characters still thrust into a protagonist role. You know, the the comedic um, side character type suddenly has to be the hero or, you know, like Bilbo Baggins kind of fits that. This is not the person who should be the main character, but by uh, coincidence of destiny and some meddling of a wizard, he happens to be. But the thing is, they don't make Carol and the other people involved the main characters by thrusting them on a typical protagonist journey. It's not about taking non-protagonist characters and making them fit a protagonist mold or go down a protagonist journey or, or realize they have to step out of their routine. No. This is about finding comfort and beauty in just having something to do and finding fulfillment in that. I think a very cynical person could twist this into some sort of celebration of being a cog in the machine. It's not though, because explicitly, none of these people doing this like are doing it like for some greater purpose. And even the guy who's quote unquote running the thing at this point, he's basically just there out of habit. This isn't about be be a good drone. It at no point does it make that uh, does it take that direction. This is just about it's okay to find joy in ordinary things because people around her, her own family, Carol's own family, are you know going on you know this this her parents are going on this end of the world cruise. Um, her sister is one of the people who's frequently skydiving and she's traveling around the world. And Carol just misses Applebee's. And that's not only okay, that's valid. There's a beauty in that. And if you can find other people like you and you can come to appreciate each other, you don't need to travel around the world to find meaning. It's okay to find meaning in the day job. It's one of the reasons, this is going to be a weird comparison. It's one of the reasons that I really appreciated um, a movie like Hidden Figures, not just for the historical relevance of that movie, but also it was really great to see a celebration of a love of math, the way that we so much more often see in films a celebration of what are considered the more creative arts, of of writing and of music and of painting. Like people can find that same passion in math, in the hard sciences. And the things that like you go on a hike, you know, for miles up a mountain to feel, to, you know, really get that thrill and go, this is living. Some people can get that just, just chatting with their friends in the coffee room. And that's okay. And that's valid. And that's almost never represented in anything. Partially because you'd assume, boy, that would be boring. And if this tried to be, say, a movie, yeah, it would be. But the pace that it allows for the 10 episodes, 10 one-half-hour episodes, it really communicates all that extremely well. This is low-key in every way. And also quite funny. Like, there is a melancholy overtone. The world is still ending. Um, but 
there, there's definitely um, some good humor. And a lot of it is just world building stuff. I mentioned stuff like the skydivers. There's also just a lot of casual nudity. There are people who just clearly went, well, who cares anymore? And just got rid of all their clothes. And, you know, it's not necessarily a, uh, a sexual thing. They're just like, oh, hey, how you doing? You know, why bother anymore? What difference does it make? It's fine. And if you're wondering about the logistics of, wait, if, if this is the case, how does anything work? They actually kind of cover that in a few ways. Not like extensively, but enough to be like, okay, no, they actually thought about this setting. And it's, it's funny without going out of its way to be laugh out loud. It's touching without like trying to jam a dagger into your heart. It's warm in an introverted, slightly distancing way. It's a show of contradictions and of people and characters and ways of existing and finding fulfillment in your life that just don't ever get celebrated. It's very easy to tell a story about somebody breaking from their routine. It's very difficult to tell a story about somebody enjoying their routine. Whenever you deal with a character who's very much set in a routine in a TV show or a film, it's going to be about breaking out of that routine or about how that routine is somehow crushing or soul destroying or all that stuff. And this doesn't pretend that routines can't be that, but that's not what it is for everybody. It's frequently what it is for creative types, which is why a lot of our media and entertainment made by creative types focuses on breaking out of that routine and like all of that's valid obviously, but it leaves behind a whole swath of people in a, an entire way of viewing the world and life and experiences that just doesn't get told in the form of entertainment because the kind of people who view the world that way tend to not be the kind of people involved in the creative arts. But some kind of magical confluence came together to make this. It's difficult to talk about how much I like this without overselling it. Because again, the, the emphasis here is low key. This is extremely low key, right down to the art style. Actually, this is an art style that if it was in anything other than this, I probably wouldn't like. It's not an especially visually appealing art style. It's distinct, but not fully unique. Uh, the, you know, the character designs are like, that works, but you could also see this character design being used in a off-brand family guy knockoff. And if it was some, if this art style was using something like that, it would be insufferable to me. But for this story with these characters and this tone, it actually kind of works. It's not particularly beautiful. It's functional. It gets the job done. It brings the ideas across in a way very much like how the characters do and how they are. The voice acting is all very good, but again, it, it feels weird to be like, oh, this voice acting was amazing because it's not trying to be. It's just trying to bring across a very low-key person. And pretty much all of them do. I didn't know what this was going to be. I didn't know what to expect of this. But this is something truly unique. And I don't know if it's going to work for everybody. Actually, I guarantee you it's not. But for the perspective that it offers and something that I see so rarely, actually, like the reason I brought up my dinner with Andre is that's the only other thing that I can think about that did even a halfway decent job of what this thing is doing. Um, and few things even attempt to do this, which is just to challenge the idea of, you know, You've got limited time on this earth. Go and experience all the all the wonders and, and have incredible adventures. And like, why can't you find joy in what's around you? And like, some people can't. It's you're not you're not invalid by needing those things to or desiring those things to have grander experiences, but also that's not the only way to be. And I love how well this shows that. Carol in the end of the world. This, this was, this was just lovely. Um, have you seen it? I'd be surprised. Like I said, I hadn't even heard of this thing, but 
if you have thoughts on either how I've described it or anything else that you can think of that does what I'm talking about this thing doing, um, or if you have seen it, whatever your thoughts might be, drop something down in the comments and let's talk about it. Patreon pays the bills, enables me to do this as my living, even if you can't help me out that way. Like, share, subscribe. They all help as well. Don't worry too much about it, though. We take a relaxed attitude around here, especially fitting for this show. So just come on back next time you need a break. And now to thank my highest supporting patrons, Robin Moore, Zubin Mutfula, Goddess Elida, Welsh Wrestling Geeks, Oliver B., Melissa Pedersen, Tarak, the thing that goes doink in the anime, Gene Foray, Movie Turtle, Ulrich Bogdan, Loki Eris, Melinda Walters, Auntie Kate, Fado 8, Becky Sparks, Tritzy Scrabbit, Angry Casperl, Dave Hall, White Bearish, Rosalind Bennett, Pal Barabajago, Mira G, and Sir Didymus is my favorite. Oh look, you actually get a face this time and not just butts.